need to know at least once a week that uh, the date or the time and the day. Um, so it's Tuesday at two, and we're happy to have welcome you all. Um, thank you so much to the city for facilitate this gathering. Um, for those who haven't joined us before, um, I'm Kathy Weber. I'm the executive director of the Downtown Alameda Business Association. It's nice to see all of these friendly faces. Um, and we'd like to uh, just kind of, this is an opportunity for the city okay. to share updates about new initiatives, about things that's, that are going on, um, and answer questions that you, can, that you may have. So if you have questions, please go ahead and put them in the chat box. We can address them there. Um, if people have questions, we can, we can um, be unmuted to, um, to go ahead and, and share those questions with uh, folks who are here. So um, I'd like to welcome our members of uh, the city of Alameda. Um, we'd also like to welcome our friends from Waba and the chamber who have gathered and other members of the business community. So with that, um, I can turn it over to our friends from the city. Thanks, Kathy. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Henry. I'm the city's public information officer. And last week we officially noticed this meeting so that members of the city council could attend. And joining us today are Mayor Marilyn Ezzi Ashcraft, Council Member Jim Odie, and I suspect a few um, other folks might attend as well. So, but, uh, but they're in the room at the moment. And we are also recording this meeting, so we'll post it up on the city's website after it's, uh, after it's finished. I'm gonna give a quick update from the city's Emergency Operations Center, and then Eric Fonstein is gonna give a quick update regarding economic development. Um, and then we'll go back to Kathy Weber, Executive Director of DABA, who will share remarks and moderate a Q&A with, with all of you. Our ESC remains activated for the COVID-19 incident. Recently, the ESC helped provide staff and traffic control at the food bank. They went from serving 35 people a day to over 500, so it was quite a task um, that the city was that happy to be able to help with. And then the big news this past Friday, Bay Area counties, including Alameda, issued a new health order that requires face coverings. Um, those are required when at an essential business, like picking up to go food or when going to the grocery store or a pharmacy, when on public transit and when seeking health care. Employees that are working at an essential job that interacts with the public must wear face masks. We have information from the county on our city website at www.alamedastrong.org, including signage that you can use, businesses can use, advertising or advising the public of this new requirement. Last week, the governor announced the creation of six critical indicators that the state will consider before modifying the stay at home order. And then yesterday, the governor announced that at tomorrow, Wednesday's noon press conference, uh, that they're gonna go into additional details about where we are at with those indicators. So we'll post information um, about that after the fact, but they're also, those press conferences are also available. They're streamed on the news and they're also streamed on Facebook Live on the governor's page. One final note before I turn it over to Eric Fonstein. Uh, we sent a letter out to the business community from city manager Eric Levitt, who's also on the call today last Thursday, and those letters are gonna continue to come from him. Um, but if you didn't receive the letter, we wanna make sure you're added to our mailing list. So if you can send me an email, um, at shenry at alamedaca.gov. We'll be sure to add you to that list. Thank you all so much for your community, especially. And uh, we're here for you as a resource if there's anything that you need. And with that, I'll turn it over to Eric. Thank you very much, uh, Sarah. This is uh, Eric Fonstein with the Economic Development Department. I wanna thank uh, Kathy Daba and also Waba and the other business associations for helping uh, put together these town hall meetings and also our series of webinars that we put on. I'll be very brief. Um, uh, since last week, there's just been a couple of items I wanna to bring to your attention. Uh, one is uh, Facebook announced a grant program and we posted a link on our website. Um, and this grant program right now is open to um, people, businesses in the Seattle, New York, and San Francisco Bay areas. And it's a special opening tomorrow, uh, um, April 22nd. It goes expands to greater uh, geographic area. So I encourage you to take a look at it um, today. Another grant program that's opened up to um, Samuel Adams 
A brewery is a um, special uh, program for restaurant workers. I believe it's up to a thousand dollar grant for workers. It's through um, the website is restaurantstrong.org, and that link is also going to be on our website. So I think you need to, qualifications is working for a restaurant for the last three months and then having um, two pay stubs and working for over 30 hours per week. So, and then finally, we're tracking the new um, legislation uh, for uh, relief, uh, business relief and SBA funding It's passed the house. It's on to the Senate, so we'll keep you posted on that. So now to Kathy, I believe. Thank you. Um, so we've got, um, I have a question that came in um, that is uh, through email. Um, and it is, um, we're wondering, the city is thinking about doing in regards to public hearings. Uh, are you considering doing them via telecommunications platform? Um, they have a buyer for some property and they were about to finally get the project for the planning board and then go to public hearing. And how are the planning board meetings to required public uh, hearings going to be addressed uh, in this new time? Um, City Manager Eric Levitt, do you want to take that, co that question? Sure, I can take that. Uh, we, we are still having public meetings um, and we are able to have um, public hearings. If the person is, uh, wants to get a hold of, they could send an email directly to me at E-L-E-V-I-T-T at alameda.ca.gov Alameda and we could see what the status would be on their property, but I could connect them with Andrew Thomas in our planning department, but we are still doing those types of hearings. It has slowed down because of the COVID-19, but there is still availability if, if, if it's an urgency issue. Okay, thank you. Kathy, I just wanted to add that council member Malia Vela has joined as well. And can I, may I speak? Of course. <laughs> okay, hi everybody. Thank you for being here. I'm really um, excited to hear from all of our businesses because we know this is a tough time for um, all of you. Um, as far as a platform for allowing participation, public participation, the question we just heard seemed like it had more to do with um, a planning board hearing, but I do want people to know that we are also looking into with our city clerk the ability to make our city council meetings even more accessible um, to the public than they are. Right now, you can submit your um, questions or comments via email, text message, or voicemail, which our city clerk will um, read into the record. And there are also um, options for actually having people be able to speak their own comments. So every um, meeting that we do, we seem to get better um, mastering the technology, but, but do not hesitate to, to reach out to us um, via email and, and the city manager certainly gave you his email address and um, you can get the city council members address on the website as well. Thanks. Um, we've got another question about the SBA and EIDL uh, program. Um, to, and they're just wondering if anybody has um, any insight um, that if more money is going to be approved and do you need to um, repeat the application process? I can, I can speak to that. Um, so as Eric mentioned, we are, uh, it does, uh, a, a bill has uh, passed, or it looks like it's going to pass Congress. We're hoping it's going to pass the Senate. So we're hoping there's going to be more information for the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program and the Paycheck Protection Program coming through. Um, my understanding is that if you are in the queue, um, you will be considered for this new funding, but we may be getting more information about that at once we um, know what's passed and we've heard from the SBA. So we're going to be uh, sending all that information out to the business community as we, we get it. 
Um, and Meg, I think I have your contact information, um, so I'll make sure that, that you're on that email list. And then we have another, thank you, um, we have another request. Can the city print up uh, the nice signs which show the people how to demonstrate face coverings and distancing for businesses that are open? I'm sure we could do that, right everybody? Um, so, so that was a, a question about can the city print up signs to post in businesses that are open about about the requirement of face coverings and or how to yeah. make them or it was um i think one that was provided in an email yesterday yeah i can speak to that um so the county when they did the order on friday they posted up on the county's website a link to um just like i think it's just an eight and a half by eleven um uh, flyer of sorts that you could post in your window to show people that you need to, you know, what the what the county's health order says and that masks are required. And so I put that up on the website. Um, if you go to alamedastrong.org, which is just a shortcut to our COVID page on the city's website, um, there's a, a, an infographic with information about the masks. And then below that, you can download the text of the order. And then you can also download um, the actual flyer that the county produced. In terms of us printing them, I, I know that there's an issue with um, the virus living on paper, and so I don't know. Um, I don't know how we, if we'd want to do that, or just offer folks to print it out on their um, on, off of the city's website. I, actually, that was what I was referring to. Not that we would go around and distribute them, yeah, but yeah. but to make them available, and then that would be good because then everyone's posting the same notice in their their businesses. Yeah. <laughs> And this is really important, by the way. Um, I'm so glad that our county public health officer has taken this step because we're learning more all the time about how this virus is transmitted. So we've got to get people you know, coming into businesses and lining up outside the grocery store. They've all got to be wearing masks. Thank you. Um, so somebody said that there was a moratorium for commercial lease payments. Um, can someone expand on this in detail? Go ahead, Eric. <laughs> Are you going to take that? Sure. Um, Eric, Eric Vonstein, yeah. So uh, I believe it goes for the second reading tonight, and it's to for the leases that are covered in, um, during the a state of emergency to when the emergency is lifted, there will be a six month um, period for, in order that the, uh, pers the business could um, pay back those leases over the, um, that six month extension period. And I, I believe if I'm correct, the, the repayment period starts 30 days after the declaration has been lifted. So the right. Emergency declaration period plus 30 days, then six months within which to repay the um, suspended um, lease payments. And then uh, there's a question Is there talk of a way to officially do curbside delivery? We want to be safe and responsible, but would like to find a way to officially do the curbside. Eric Bonstein, do you want to take that one again? Um, I know that this was um, mentioned at uh, last night's uh, DABA uh, virtual mixer about drop-off and pickup zones. And that's something that, yes, we would like to uh, work with the planning department of how we could make certain accommodations like that that help support our businesses. But um, it's definitely something that we want to look into. And then, let's see. Um, will Alameda be following federal uh, California or its own plan to reopen businesses? Um, is there any work being done on a timeline specifically for personal service businesses, person to person? Um, I'll jump in on that one. Um, for those of you who were on the governor's or listening to the governor's press conference last week when he listed the six indicators that will help him decide when it's time to relax the stay at home order, he emphasized that he will leave that decision to local governments 
informed by their public health departments. I am extremely pleased with Alameda County's um, public health department, our public health officer. The Bay Area counties were the first in the nation to do the shelter in place order. And you may have seen in the Chronicle this morning, our hospitalization rates are lower than in the rest of the state. So those are among the, um, the indicators that, that will help us decide. I know everyone is just chomping at the bit to open up again. And I'm really excited to hear what the governor's got to say tomorrow, unless you, tomorrow's Wednesday. So we'll also have um, the elected officials get a, a weekly briefing from our county public health department. And then there's the governor's uh, press conference. So I know there's just a lot of efforts being made to get people back to work. And so uh, we want to make sure we do it safely because the last thing we would want is a relapse and to have to go back and do this all over again. And right now we're in that tenuous position where our numbers, knock on wood, uh, in, in our city, in our county, relatively speaking, are decent, um, but we do have a shortage of testing. So we, we don't know what we don't know. And then um, once we relax restrictions and people are out, there is an increased chance that people will be um, exposed and there could be a relapse. On the other hand, and the governor emphasized this, we're California. We've got labs, we've got teaching hospitals, um, public, private, partnerships are going on, working towards um, a therapeutic so that if you were to get COVID-19, you could have a medicine to take and probably not till next year, but next year, a vaccine. So those are the sorts of things that help protect us, that and, and additional testing. Um, but I, I mean, speaking as the mayor of Alameda, I would follow our governor because he has not led us astray. And he made the, the point last week that it is um, not politics, but policy that has to govern. And um, I just think that we would be well served by following the dictates of our public health officer. And I, I know the county is also anxious to get us back as soon as possible. It's just finding that sweet spot so it's not too soon that would send us back to more restrictions. And we have a question asking for um, some clarification on the repayment of the leases, the rate of repayment. Um, is there any additional information since um, you said that it's going to be difficult because businesses are going to be struggling for the, the remainder of the year, next year? Yeah, Amanda. Amanda Gerke. I'm just unmuting her. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's, that was, the, that was the, the secret handshake. Sorry, I have some background noise going on. Um, so the um, businesses will, will have 180 days um, to repay their rent um, following 30 days after the end of the emergency uh, declaration. Okay. Is there any update? Okay. Is there any update on the city's efforts uh, to work with the county on expanding the definition of minimum business operations for those businesses that are not classified as essential? Eric, Eric Levitt, are we are we doing anything along those lines? And also, Kathy, um, do you have? particular businesses in mind. Um, last week I spoke to the Commercial Realtors Association and they said, I think what they told me, this is one of those things I have to follow up on, is that while real estate, um, residential real estate businesses are classified as essential but commercial are not. And um, is that, do you have particular sectors in mind? Um, this, now, this was a question from our, our, from our, our audience, so oh, um, okay. perhaps they can, uh, they can expand on it a little bit in the comment section. And, and I, I, I can an, I answer somewhat the question. I think the mayor answered it on the, on the, initial, on the initial question, but uh, the question before this, but on minimum um, business operations for those, businesses that are not classified as essential, then what you need to do is um, 
we we have to as a city follow both the, the county and the state designation so sometimes the state is stronger and sometimes the county is stronger on what the designation it has gone back and forth between the two over the 30 days uh, we do communicate with the county but we don't have a lot of say of how the county defines it it's the public health officer that has the ultimate definition as far as the county um, although I'll add that we're in pretty close communication with our County Supervisor uh, Wilma Chan. And then what I told the realtors last week is get me more information because I am happy to carry it to the League of California Cities, which is doing a masterful job at keeping all of our, uh, all of their member cities informed on a daily basis of all the developments at the federal, state, you know, county levels. And so, you know, if there's, if there's some sector that's missing and anybody who ever asked that question, feel free to, to email me with more, um, with more details and I'll, I'll see what I can do or punch it over to the city manager. And then we have a question about um, testing. It kind of has to do with curbside uh, delivery, but um, also, I think we've heard it from um, some other folks as well, um, is will there be any testing available for um, frontline and um, folks in the, in the service industries, the restaurant and grocery workers? Oh, I'll take that one. Um, just last week. So I will also add that there has been excellent communication um, statewide, the League of California Cities is keeping its member cities informed, and also the county. The, there are 14 cities in Alameda County. Then we comprise what's called, called the Alameda County Mayor's Conference. And we tend to meet in person once a month, but last week we had our monthly meeting via Zoom. And it was a great meeting, and we traded information back and forth after the business agenda was done. And one of the things that I um, found out, and I write about it in my newspaper column that'll come out in the journal and the sun this week, is that the city of Oakland has opened two testing sites in downtown Oakland, and they offer free testing for all um, medical workers, public uh, safety workers, and also public facing essential workers. So for instance, your grocery store clerks, your food bank volunteers and others. And so um, in the article, oh, Sarah Henry might have that information, but, but not to worry if you don't, I, I, we can make that available. There's a, um, it is by appointment and they are following the CDC guidelines, which means you must be showing COVID-19 symptoms or you must have been exposed to someone who's been diagnosed positive with COVID-19. But then there is a, um, an email address and you go there to register and uh, to ask any questions and you will um, get an appointment. So it's free, it's in downtown Oakland and Mayor Libby Schaff said they have an allotment of 500 test kits a day and they've never used that that maximum. So that's that's a really important piece of information for your um, for your workers. And if you you want that information sooner than when the newspaper article comes out, email me. I will um, get it out to you. I just don't have it in front of me. Um, a question. I did, I, oh, I, I did want to add a couple points. Um, I, I represent a lot of uh, frontline workers. Uh, this is council member Malia oh, Bella. Malia. Uh, and, voice, yeah. and there's um, there we we've also uh, I also represent a number of workers at, at several area hospitals and so their their testing is now available at most of our area hospitals on site for folks that go in and need testing if it comes down to that um, although the hospitals are asking people um, to, to work with their primary care physicians um, and to go through these testing sites. So I, I do want to put that out there. Um, the testing is available uh, through uh, both the Oakland site. There's uh, also a site in Hayward that is pr uh, prioritizing uh, frontline workers as well. Um, but they're asking folks to go through their primary care physician ahead of time and make sure that um, it's actually recommended that they go in for a test to follow the CDC guidelines. And then, um, Jim Modi, you might know this. Um, the last time I heard, Alameda Hospital wasn't offering testing, but has that changed? But, and I would second what Malia said, that um, it is not 
drop in testing, they're want they're going to want you to go through your primary care provider. But Jim, do you even know if Alameda Hospital has tests available? I know we just got an update from them maybe an hour ago, so give me a chance to look through it, okay? Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, from uh, Mr. Lightfoot. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to read that either. You should see the emails I get in an hour. But anyway, yes, thanks. Um, and then also another question is um, the city looking at offering an extension of the application for the uh, facade program? The facade grant program? Yes. Community development? Yeah, I just <laughs> unmuted you, Amanda. Oh, thank you. I was actually, I was responding to a question in the chat about where to find the rent relief ordinance. Uh, so could you repeat that question? Sure. Um, is, this, can, is the city um, going to offer an extension of the application for the facade grant program? So we are looking at the program um, right now and we're gonna have an update for businesses this week. Um, so we will we'll be sending that information out to all the folks um, who have applied or showed interest in applying and also out to our general um, business list. Okay. And then there's a follow-up. Um, might the grant be uh, the side grant uh, used to help businesses adapt to maintain social distancing as we reopen? That's a really interesting. That's a really interesting question. It's something we can look at. Yeah. yeah. It's a that, smart crowd. Oh, yeah. it is a smart crowd. I um I've said this before. I have really smart residents in Alameda, and it's not that I'm competitive, but I want my city to have the lowest per capita COVID nineteen rate, and the highest census return rate. So please, if you haven't gotten your census out yet, go online and get that done. It's really important for our city. Um, and you know that is a really good question, Kathy, because one of the things the governor said last week at the press conference is the new normal when we're all opening up again. And he said, it's not gonna be a matter of flipping on a light switch. It's gonna be more like a dimmer switch and it's gonna be raised gradually. And we'll see, you know, the testing will tell us, how are we doing? Can we go a little farther? Do we have to go back? But one of the things he said is that businesses and schools and childcare facilities are gonna to have to look at how they're gonna be able to do this physical distancing that is gonna be required. And of course, for restaurants, you know, fewer tables means fewer customers and all that. But that um, I think is a, a great question about the use of the facade grant. And we've got really smart people in community development, so they'll be all over it. Um, and then we have um, some more comments just in relationship to um, the repayment and rent reductions. Um, Let's see, um, just looking at if there's any conversation about uh, instead of a delay, having a period of rent abatement, um, if there's been any discussion about that, um, and then also the extending that, that uh, increasing that uh, payback uh, for rents. So as far as abatement, so you know, deferment means you get to put off paying, abatement means it's forgiven altogether. Um, we as um, landlords, because the city owns property around the city and, and Alameda Point, the council could make that decision. I'm not sure we have the legal ability to say that we can um, forgive rent for uh, private property owners. Um, and there's, it's, it's always a balancing act and, and everyone is suffering. Our, we're worried about our tenants, both residential, because we don't want people ending up on the street and commercial. I mean, if a business is closed or operating at minimum capacity, how is it supposed to pay all the recurring expenses of a mortgage and taxes and trying to keep people on payroll and all that? And at the same time, and um, the city uh, manager pays close attention to this, we've got this city budget that's shrinking as our revenues are declining while our expenses are increasing. So, um, you know, could the council consider something like a longer repayment period? Yeah, the council consider, can, can consider a lot of things. I think so much of it depends on that crystal ball that I don't have, but about 
when will we be able to come out of this? When will we start to be able to go back about our, our duties? And again, it's not going to be just from one day to the next and everything's back to normal. I'm, I'm sure that the business community has to anticipate that people are going to very gradually um, head out again to do the things we used to do. But we'll, we'll keep an eye on the situation. I, you know, I'm, I'm so hopeful that in the next few months we'll be getting back to normal, but don't, don't quote me. Um, and, and again, a lot of it is in, in our hands and under our control. And I'm really proud of my city because you have been doing what's asked of you almost universally and um, it's making a difference. Um, so uh, yeah, we can consider a lot of things that we have authority over as far as um, extending the date in our ordinance for repayment or what we do with our own uh, tenants. But I, I think people are probably thinking more in terms of their own private uh, landlords, or maybe you are a private landlord. Um, I'll just add that uh, at tonight's council meeting, there are, as you all know, um, several business relief uh, proposals coming to council. And so um, the meeting is virtual, uh, but folks can absolutely still watch it, um, just like you would watch any other council meeting. The instructions are on the website. And then there are several ways to participate. You can send an email, you can send a text, you can even leave a voicemail and we'll download those comments and we'll get it to the city council. So uh, strongly urge folks to go on, check out the agenda, see what those proposals are. And then if you want to place your comment to city council, there are multiple ways to do so. And that kind of ties into one of the questions, is Alameda giving out its own grant to small businesses? Right. And that's one of the items on the agenda tonight. Lois, do you want to talk a little more about that? Yes, I'd just like to say that staff is uh, recommending to City Council a grant program and um, it could potentially uh, serve uh, up to 80 uh, resident, uh, businesses in um, Alameda and um, the City Council will make a decision on it tonight. So if you're interested, uh, uh, you can go online to alamedaca.gov and see the uh, agenda and um, participate by, um, there's, there's information online where, where you could submit uh, your, your, um, your comments. And, and I'll supplement that. Thanks. Thanks, Lois. I'll supplement. This is a little spoiler alert that um, I've submitted um, a council referral that won't be heard this tonight, but at our next council meeting, which is May the 5th, um, asking staff to explore the creation of a tax-exempt special fund, including the application and selection criteria to pr provide gap resources to be matched with grants or philanthropic donations to local small businesses, renters, and other local organizations significantly impacted by the declared COVID-19 state of emergency. And this is something that other cities in the Bay Area have done. I think San Francisco has a program. Berkeley is doing something. And I and some of our city staff have been approached by some generous individuals saying, you know, we're in a position where we would like to help those less fortunate, both businesses, nonprofits, um, uh, individuals, renters, what have you. So um, I fully expect, um, well, I'm hopeful that the staff will, will um, want to take that up in May, but that's, I just, that's my little spoiler alert um, that uh, because the need is, is great and so um, we want to be as responsive as we can and um, as is often the case sometimes a public private partnership is just um, the best way to go about these things um, and there is um, um, is it possible to put a limit on rent increases for commercial properties. Debbie Potter on this call? She's not. I don't think she is. I, I, Mayor, I'm happy to answer that. The, the feedback that we got from our city attorney, uh, this is Council Member Vela again, uh, that was one of the questions that the council asked at a previous meeting. 
and we were uh, told that we did not have the authority uh, when it came to um, uh, capping increases for uh, commercial uh, commercial uh, tenants. Um, they, because state they, law under uh, the state law, yeah. we're not to do that. Um, the governor did extend certain things to local jurisdictions uh, regarding commercial properties. Uh, we've enacted those provisions uh, pursuant to the governor's orders that have allowed uh, have allowed local control um, in, in those areas, like the eviction moratorium. Um, but that's that's the extent of, of what we've been allowed to do. Malia, you want to talk a little bit though about what we were able to do as far as rent increases for residential tenants? Yeah, we were we do have uh, authority there, um, and so we did um, put a, a moratorium on uh, rent increases um, and for residential tenants. Um, and we're looking at we did enact a payback period as well. One of the things that we're hoping is, uh, in addition to the moratorium on um, residential rent increases, uh, which should help your uh, your employees and workers, is also to uh, prohibit um, the adding of penalty fees um, to uh, late or delayed rent payments. So um, we are trying to do our best to keep people housed and to not um, cause further displacement. Um, and we're looking at all of the tools available uh, and working with uh, within, you know, what the governor's newest orders are and what he's allowing local uh, councils to do. Um, I did want to uh, echo the, the mayor's comments. Um, I think one of, one of the things that's helpful about this town hall is, um, to Lois's point, uh, we are considering a number of things tonight, and it's great to hear um, from our business community um, about what you're going through and your suggestions. And I think we're, we're trying to uh, take that all into account as we look at both economic um, solutions that the city can make as well as uh, what we would say are kind of non-budgetary or non-economic. Um, and I think the other things, uh, uh, Madam Mayor, I know your referrals going through. I look forward to hearing it. I think that there's, um, you know, a lot of cities and Alameda included are going to be looking outside of the box of what we normally do um, to see how we can partner and do these public private partnerships to access more funds uh, for our small businesses. So, okay. thank and you. And then I, think I can add to that a little bit. Yeah, Jim. Okay. Sorry. I just, I, I think the rent freeze is actually on today's agenda, so I, I'm, I don't think that's been enacted yet. That's today's, okay. But we, I think we asked staff yeah. to bring it to us and it's coming to us. Right. We've been, we've been right. covering a lot of territory. And I think, um, I'm sure, sure, in fact, that community development has put out on the website, and I think Sarah on the city's website, for you property owners, if um, you haven't paid your second installment of the property tax, which was due April, was it the 10th? There is a provision for you to contact the tax collector, um, Henry Levy. There's information to uh, contact that department, explain the reasons, and you will have an extension uh, to pay your property taxes without penalties or fines. So that was something um, that a lot of people, including the 14 mayors of Alameda County, um, unanimously asked the, the county to do this. And again, there's always this tension because the county associations weren't too happy with us. The League of California Cities wasn't too happy about this request. I'm not worried about keeping all the people all the happy all the time. I just want to look out for my residents and businesses. But you know, I do get that cities, school districts, other special districts, they get their revenue from, from property taxes. But what we said in response was, but look, you know, what are our residents supposed to do? Some of them have been laid off, have been furloughed, or they're underemployed, their hours have been caught, cut. Um, our um, businesses, business owners, they're not making revenue, and yet they're still supposed to pay a property tax bill on time. And so the compromise was, um, Quite frankly, we probably would have liked to have just reduced it and not have you had to pay the whole thing. But we, we and others working on this uh, were able to buy you some time. We're just trying to remove some of the terrible pressures that everybody's feeling um, in these uncertain times. And another question is, um, do landlords have relief for their mortgages in federal programs? And then 
also kind of tying into that um, is uh, a question about, are there any rewards that can be given to landlords who act um, in a way to extend, uh, provide rent reduction um, or to extend payback time, um, including giving them public credit or other long-term incentives? Um, the nice idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things we said in, in our discussion, and, and I think is actually happening just from what I'm hearing anecdotally, is we told people, landlords, talk to your tenants. Tenants, talk to your landlords. Everybody is in this together. The last thing I want to do is create divisions. We do not need to, nor would it serve any useful purpose to pit one group against another? Um, even if landlords have some relief through the federal government, again, I don't think it's that the banks aren't saying, oh, you get a holiday, you don't have to pay your mortgage. They're, they're saying, you know, you've got more time to do it and we won't kick in penalties. But we, we want renters to have good habitable properties to live in, which means there's property tax, there's repairs, there's, you know, parcel tax that, and I'm so thankful that we voted in that uh, parcel tax for our, our teachers um, just before all this happened. I've heard it said that parents who are home with their um, children now think that teachers should be paid about a million dollars a year. But, um, but so everybody's got obligations and things they're juggling with. Our, our job, I feel, as elected officials and our, our city staff is to see how we can help everyone to keep this community moving forward. But you businesses, this, the business community, I mean, you are the heart and soul of our city. And my husband and I walk downtown to pick up dinner every Friday. We do take out someplace different in the city. And I mean, it's sad just walking down these streets and just, you know, most everything is closed. And so we want to help everybody weather this very difficult time and then get back up on their feet as readily as possible when it's over. Um, and here's a question. Um, in the event a commercial tenant enters into an agreement with a landlord regarding the deferred rent payments, the landlord use that against that tenant when it comes to negotiating for an option to renew a lease. Oh, Jim Modi, why don't you take that one? Can you do that? I'm sorry. I, I, was, I was not paying attention. Oh, were you multitasking? So the question was, <laughs> the question was, was about in the deferred event, rent payment? Yes. No, it's in the event a commercial tenant enters into an agreement with the landlord regarding the deferred rent payments, but the landlord and use that against them um, when it comes to negotiating for an option to renew the lease. Hmm. Well, I, I'm going to revert back to the mayor's answer in the last question. Um, you know, we're not trying to pit anyone against anyone, and there's a lot of people that have been going above and beyond and sacrificing. I mean, in theory, it's a it's a contract and an agreement between two equal parties, right, with equal uh, negotiating power. Um, but I. I hope they don't do that, so. And you know, I would, um, although we do happen to be attorneys, some of us here on the screen, we're, we're not city attorneys and we don't practice law. That's probably a good one for our city attorney's office. But I will say what we have done is actually, the, the ordinance is really saying that your non-payment of rent um, is a defense if your landlord were to bring you to court for an unlawful detainer action. Right now, courts are closed for those sorts of actions, so that's not gonna happen. But given the fact that you have that protection, that defense, it would be hard for me to imagine that a landlord could use that against a tenant in a commercial negotiation. But I would wanna to defer to the city attorneys who did you know, the legal uh, review mm -hmm. of, of this ordinance. But Again, um, I'm guessing that everybody, even landlords, are going to be in a tough position because most people aren't just going to jump back on their feet. But it, you know, it might be kind of difficult to to fill your properties. Um, so we always we always hope for the best efforts um, and good faith efforts from all sides, and we almost always get it. Um, I think that these 
these ordinances are in place to just protect those people who might not have that ideal landlord. But from what I'm hearing, we've got an awful lot of decent landlords uh, in Alameda. But again, if someone has that experience, email over to, to us and we'll get an answer for you. Mm -hmm. And you know, one other thing to add, um, you know, a lot of businesses can't do what they're built to do. Uh, and another one of the agenda items tonight is some zoning, uh, temporary zoning uh, requirement suspensions that if passed would allow businesses to say, sell things that are essential. And say you're an ice cream shop, I think that was a question from John. Um, you know, you could sell razors or toilet paper or toothpaste or you know, any type of thing that, that's deemed essential. So that's another opportunity that if passed, you know, businesses can help. Um, alleviate some of the burdens they're under. I was just going to add that I find um, ice cream to be essential. So I just <laughs> shouldn't even be a close call. Um, has uh, this crisis uncovered or accelerated any macro drivers that will deliver permanent shifts in the way that we do business moving forward in Alameda or in California? Can someone translate that for me? Um, Lois Butler, you speak that language, right? <laughs> so so um, we do believe that there will be um, changes in the way that we do business uh, throughout the country because of the COVID virus. Things have been introduced to our society that um, were not anticipated before. Uh, so in short, uh, maybe uh, there may be a need for more micro drivers um, in the future, uh, unfortunately. Here in Alameda, though, we are encouraging uh, people to uh, continue to uh, go in and visit um, our restaurants when we open back up to full um, participation. Um, we, we, we don't want to see our downtowns go empty um, and we don't want to see uh, people just ordering things online. And so, um, yes, it, there will be a shift, um, but we're encouraging folks uh, and our campaigns will lead towards that once uh, we open back up fully. Thanks, Lois. Um, are there any rules about what is allowable or not allowable regarding absentee landlords? Um, I have no fo functional phone number, email, or address for my landlord, and certified letters did not uh, reach them. Are there any rules as to minimum requirements for a landlord to conduct business? Um, that's one that I can have um, city staff look into if um, whoever is asking that question um, could, can email me, mseashcraft at alamedaca.gov. And then um, has the city discussed the fact that unemployment insurance um, may wind up uh, that may allow that somebody is actually making more than on unemployment than they would if they were um, working. Um, we have an, an issue with this with our minimum wage employees, um, that they may be making more staying at home and um, struggling with owners, and owners may struggle to get employees to go back to work. So um, this is a, the um, unemployment is determined by the state of California and the state of California um, uh, is, is responsible for calculating unemployment. Malia wants to say something. Can you unmute Malia? Yeah, I, I would say there's a look back period. So I, I, I guess, um, yeah, there is the additional money from the federal government, but it's still calculated based on the look back period. So nobody should be making more money than they made before. Um, the additional money from the federal government um, is just to help make people whole. 
Um, previously in, in a lot of states, California actually had one of the highest weekly unemployment rates, uh, amounts, sorry. Um, and so we were, we, you know, typically uh, pay people around $450 um, is the, was the cap per week, which is not a lot of money. In fact, it, it doesn't meet uh, the minimum for a lot of, uh, a lot of families who are living paycheck to paycheck. Um, sorry, I'm one of those parents that thinks teachers should be paid a million dollars a year. Um, uh, but uh, just to just to make it clear, so the additional money from the federal government will just help um, folks to try to get uh, pay, paycheck recovery, essentially. Um, it's not to give them an additional amount of money that they would have made. They're, they're still subject to the look back period in that calculation. And in fact, we're seeing the opposite problem where a lot of people, especially tipped employees, aren't able to recover their tips. So they're losing, they're losing a substantial amount of money. And then um, yeah, just a reiteration that um, of the six month payment of deferred rent um, is not going to work because it creates a major rent increase when we're trying to rebuild. Um, so I think if there are ways um, that we can. I'm sorry, Kathy, I was reading chat messages at the same time. Yes. Apparently I don't multitask well. Could you repeat the question? It's, uh, it's um, the six month payment, repayment of deferred rent is, is not going to work because it creates major rent, a, rent, a major rent increase when we're in the process of trying to rebuild. Um, we can't find some way to deal with the situation. The rent is most likely going to kill us. Um, we need something that is going to spread the pain uh, to everyone or spend, uh, spread the repayment over a much longer time. So what I would say is that nothing is etched in stone. As I said earlier, we'll know more when we know more about how long this is going on, when businesses can start to reopen and at what, at what rate. And so one of the things our staff is really good about doing when council asks them is to go out and do that outreach and find out, so how is this impacting our businesses? Was six months not enough time? Um, you know, what does it look like in real time? It's, it's hard to sit here right now and anticipate, um, but we, when we made the decision, and then there was a lot of discussion at council, we thought that the six months plus the 30 days, you know, it won't, the repayment won't even start for 30 days after the, um, the, the emergency declaration is lifted. So in a sense, that's seven months. But if you're coming to the end of that seventh month period and there's some hard evidence that that's, that's a hardship, um, we'll, we'll reconsider, but, but we'll reconsider through the lens of what the city's finances look like then. Um, I am hopeful that, I don't think it happened on this, this um, federal stimulus package that apparently was just approved, and maybe it hasn't gone to the Senate yet, but I, I think they're gonna approve. But anyway, we've been asking, the, the League of California Cities um, and the counties have been asking to get the stimulus money directly to cities. Right now, the way the previous, the most recently before today past package is worded is that the direct aid to cities is only cities of 500,000 population or above. In the entire Bay Area, that's two cities, San Francisco and San Jose, but that doesn't mean that others aren't suffering. So um, again, we'll, to, to your point, I don't wanna to get too far afield, but it's, this is what the ordinance says now. If we get into that time period and it's looking like businesses are in danger of going under because this is just not enough help, we'll see what we can do or we'll look for, um, we'll look for more funds. And we, we do keep in close touch with, um, well, the state legislature hasn't gone back yet. I think maybe this week they're going to have a special sec session on COVID expenditures. But we've certainly been in touch with our, um, our Congresswoman, Barbara Lee. In fact, she's my guest on my town hall this, um, this Friday. So maybe she'll have some really fresh information to, um, to give us. But we're, we're definitely looking into these different sources of funding. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll stay responsive to the best of our ability. Um, okay, 
Um, we have any other questions? Um, let's see. There is um, an official suggestion, a request from the city to uh, commercial landlords for a percentage of uh, rent reduction would help. Um, Alameda could lead in, in terms of making that official and it would help with our discussions with the landlords. Um, if I'm understanding that correctly, it's about the city asking for a reduction in commercial rent percentages. But back to what my colleague um, Malia Vela pointed out, um, we have to stay in our lane. Um, we are um, stopped by state law from passing laws that um, impact the rate of commercial rent. So the, that's the state legislature, um, it, is, it is out of our hands. So, but you can always get in touch with your state legislators. So, and we've got, I mean, I, and I say this often, I'm gonna do my little plug now. You should all feel very blessed to be Californians, to live in a state where our governor is smart, proactive, not reactive when it comes to um, addressing COVID-19. He's listening to public health officials and others. I mean, he has 13 task forces advising him and economic development and business is certainly among them. But then we're lucky to be in the Bay Area where all of the public health directors of the five most populous counties and the city of Berkeley, which has its own health department, have acted in concert. So when they issue a public health order, it goes across the you know San Francisco, San Mateo, Marin, Contra Costa, uh, and Alameda County and the city of Berkeley because this virus isn't stopping at city limits and, and um, county lines. And so this, this is a good thing. This is going to get us back in operation and we're not going to have the sort of nightmare that the state of New York and New York City and some, some places are having. Um, I think it's every mayor's and governor's worst nightmare. But at the same time, we're, and we're lucky on all levels. We've got great representation. So reach out to our assembly member and Alameda resident, Rob Bonta. Reach out to Senator Nancy Skinner. Um, they're, they, like like I said, they're responsive, they've got their ear to the ground, but, but they need to hear from the business community because you make your case very well. So if this, you know, this commercial rent is an issue for you, and especially right now, let them know and tell them I said so. Well, thank you so much. We are at- Before you leave, um, yes. Amanda wanted to say something. Can we unmute Amanda? Free Amanda. <laughs> oh, I think I found her. She's not here by name. Um, oh, she's in community development. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So she's unmuted. And then, uh, Kathy, if you can um, uh, offer council members, um, Odie and Bella, a chance to say a few words before we end with as well. We don't have to end right at the hour. I just wanted to let folks know that the bill passed the Senate for um, the relief bill includes more funding for the SBA loan programs. Um, that includes, uh, I think, 320 or $380 billion for the Paycheck Protection Program, which is a yeah. forgivable loan. Yes. Um, so Ooh. if folks, if you guys haven't already applied, I'm already hearing about businesses here in Alameda that are getting these loans. If you haven't applied and you want to, um, and you're looking for assistance, uh, please reach out to us at econdev at alamedaca.gov. We can put you in touch with technical assistance, webinars on the subject, um, anything to help you guys get this money. So I'll, I'll put the yeah. email address in the chat function, but we're here to help you access um, these funds. These are a great resource and that is great um, news. I'm going to wave goodbye to everybody and run to my next Zoom meeting. So thank you all for being here. If there's anything I didn't answer that you still want answers to, email me. Take care, everybody. Stay safe, stay strong. Wear those masks when you're out and about. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Maya. Thank you. Um, I, I just wanted to say this is Councilmember Vela. Uh, thank you all for your feedback. This is really helpful going into our meeting tonight. Um, it, it really helps us. It helps me um, get a clearer sense of what's going on and to hear from all of you. 
Um, I, I know that the um, we're having lots of town halls, all the council members and uh, city staff. Um, Friday, the mayor is having her town hall uh, with Congresswoman Barbara Lee, uh, so you can uh, get in touch with the congresswoman then. And on Saturday, uh, council member Bill, uh, Jim Odie and I are going to be having assembly member Rob Bonta on. Um, the, uh, as the mayor mentioned, the assembly had a special meeting yesterday um, to discuss a, a budget session and they're going to have continued meetings this week and next week um, remotely. Uh, so if you'd like to give him feedback at that town hall, um, please join us. Uh, we also will be having some uh, representative from Go, uh, uh, Go Biz um, with us. Um, so I think it's a, a great opportunity for our business community to weigh in directly with those sources as well. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Yeah, I want to add every, uh, everyone, thank you. Uh, echo the mayor and, and um, Councilmember Vela. I think we're looking at someone from a new America. Uh, so, but we're still working on uh, a business resource. So stay tuned and I hope to talk with all of you again on Saturday. Well, thank you all for joining us at uh, Tuesdays at two. Um, we will continue this uh, next week. If you have questions that um, you want to make sure are shared and you're not able to share it in the chat, you can feel free to send um, those questions in advance. Um, it is Kathy at downtownalameda.com and I can make sure to share those, um, those questions uh, with the group. Um, Thank you so much to everybody who's taken the time, um, all of the, the business community, um, all of uh, the, the merchants and, and shopkeepers and, and restaurateurs and everybody who makes this community so vibrant and vital. Um, we appreciate your input um, and thank you especially to the city council members, to the mayor and to city staff who are uh, always making themselves available and um, also, we'll continue to share the, the great partnerships that we have with our business partners, WABA, and, um, and also the Chamber. So we're offering uh, great uh, resources as well. So thank you, and we will see everybody um, next Tuesday at 2. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.